Welcome to this Pro Go Django screencast. I've already started out by creating a to do application that actually works fully. This is how it looks and how it works. I've used class based views for everything on the view side of it, and then I have some custom model functions on the back end. In this episode, we're going to talk about testing. There's a lot of information in testing, and there's a lot to do with testing, but this is just going to be the very basics so we can get you up to speed so that we can get on to some of the more complicated tasks. First, let's talk a little bit about the purpose of testing. Testing is an opportunity to automate those things that you need to test every time you do a change and do it. Imagine if you changed code and every time you changed that code, you had to go and test everything that you've ever done. As an example, let's say you added a URL and you wanted to make sure that it worked correctly. If you're not careful on how you write your URLs, you can overwrite others as well. So you need to go and test every single page just to be safe. However, if you automate that, you know that every single URL actually works and works properly. And all you had to do is run one command and everything runs. Testing can also help you write better code. It helps you keep things slimmer, it helps you refactor, and helps you be generally more secure in your thoughts and feelings about your code as you're changing things. Unfortunately, testing isn't one of those things that is just easy to pick up and run with because it actually takes a lot of learning from actually doing it for a little bit of time to actually realizing whatever you're testing, you need to learn the ins and outs of. So with that all in mind, let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to go over is creating a basic test class, a little bit about running the test runner, a little bit about running tests and how that actually works, and then actually writing a few different tests to show how to do it and how everything works. Again, this is going to be a fairly simple introduction into testing. Our next testing video is going to cover some more edge cases, and then in future videos, we're actually gonna get into more advanced topics like mocking, integration tests, Selenium tests, how to test different parts of the framework, like how to do form set tests, various other topics on testing. But today we're just going to look at a model and then write some tests for it and view how to run those tests. So with that in mind, let's get started. Since we're going to be testing our model, let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what we have to work with. I'd just like to note that we're not doing test driven development. In this case, we have working code. We're just going to be testing it. This is a common approach that beginners take to testing because it's a little more easy to wrap your head around than actually starting in and diving in on test driven development where you're writing all your tests before you actually write any code. So here we have our model. It's a basic item. In it we have a title, a slug, a description, order, and completed. Those are all fairly self-explanatory. One of the features of our model is on our save method, we actually slugify the title so that we have a nice, compact, easy to use string that we, can, that we can use in our URL. We have a nice helper function for marking our item as completed. We also have our get absolute URL, which is something the Django framework likes to use to make auto-completing the URL of a specific object a lot easier. It's specifically more helpful in the admin section. Now that we're done looking at our model, let's go ahead and write some tests. In here, first thing we want to look at is we're doing an import of test case. In our basic test class, we're inheriting test case. Test case is in our testing framework and is something that we're using in Django and most of your tests are going to inherit from by default. Django has essentially extended the built-in testing stuff in Python. Let's go ahead and write our first test. The first test we're going to do is what I like to do, but a lot of people think is useless. I like to go ahead and test all the fields that are going to be required in my object. That way I know they work as I want, as I expect them to work, and I'm not left with any surprises by accident. I just want to note, if you look at the name of our function, it's called test fields. The important part is that test is at the beginning of the function. When we run our tests, our test runner is going to look through our, all of our code in our tests area 
and then it's going to look for each function that has test prepended to the function name. If it's there, it's going to run that code. And it's not going to run any of the code that has different names, so we can set up helper functions inside of our basic test class if we want. So let's go ahead and write out our code for this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our item, set our properties, and then save it. This is simple enough. This is what you do every day in Django whenever you're dealing with objects. The next thing we're going to do is we need to actually pull out our item just to be sure that we've done something and then we want to test to make sure it's correct. So now that we've pulled out our item we want to actually assert that what we're doing is correct. The best way to do an assertion is to check that it's equal to something especially since we already have our item object available to us. So we just want to compare the item object with the new item object that we just pulled from the database. Note we're doing a self assert a self dot assert equal. That's because the assertions are built into the test case class and so any of the assertions that we want to make we just call self. Also note that we haven't actually imported our item object so let's go ahead and do that now. Okay now that we have our first test written let's go ahead and run it. All right, let's look at this. What we're doing is we're using the manage command. We're saying, hey, we want to test, and then we're giving it the app name that we're going to test. In this case, our app name is main. So let's go ahead and run it. It's going to run all the tests that are in our main app under the tests.py file. Of one test, it ran, and we hit see OK. And notice it says destroying test database. What's happening is, Django is creating a SQLite database, putting it in memory, running everything, and then destroying that database out of memory. It's actually not writing to disk, and since it's in memory, it's super fast. Just to also note on that, it's not quite as fast if you aren't hitting the database, but it's a lot faster than hitting an actual database. Now that we have our first test done, when we're testing our fields, let's test our slug method. Much like our first one, we're adding test to the beginning of the method, and then I'm giving it a descriptive name of what we're doing. Because specifically, we're saving our slug on the save of the object. Since we need to create an object and then save it, I'm just going to go ahead and enter that code in. So we have our item saved, and according to our model, it should have generated a slug property and set that in the database. Since when Django does a save, it returns all that data and populates it, let's go ahead and test it directly on our item object. If you're familiar with the slugify method, it generally will lowercase everything and replace all of the spaces with hyphens. It does a few other things, but in this instance, this is what it should look like. So with this done, let's go ahead and run our test. Like before, we're doing our manage command, testing, and then the app. Here we go. We've run two tests, and they were okay. And again, we're destroying our database once we're done. Now let's test our absolute URL. With this test, we're going to test that the get absolute URL function generates the same type of URL that we would use if we would link to it in our template. If you remember from the little demo, our URL structure is the ID hyphen and then the slug. That's why we had the slug on save so it automatically is generated every time because the title is required. Like before, we're going to go ahead and create an item and save it out and then we're going to follow that up with doing our assertion so that we can test the match of the URL. Now that we have that taken care of, let's go ahead and assert that get absolute URL works the way we expect it to. We're just going to use our assert equal like normal. Now let's set up our URL the way we think it should work. 
Okay, there we go. We're calling our get absolute URL function and then we're comparing it to a string that we built. Let's go ahead and run it and see if it worked. Ah, and there we go. It didn't work. What we can see from this not working is it gives us a trace back so we can see what line it didn't work on, the test name that it ran on, and then the line code that we see. The assertion was looking for this, and as we can see, it's not equal to what we gave it. Notice the difference in this case is we need a forward slash at the beginning and at the end. And once we do that, we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and add those two things and see if it works. So we've added our forward slash at the beginning and the end. So let's go ahead and run it. And there we go, we fixed our test. As you can see, there's a lot of information in our error message above. So finally, let's go ahead and look at doing our last method, marking our item as completed using our helper function. Before we do our final test, if you've noticed, you see a lot of repeating code. Let's go ahead and first slim up that code a little bit and make sure our tests run. How we're going to slim this up is we're going to use what a built-in function that is called before every test that we run called setup. The fun thing about this is you set up different things that you need for each of your tests. In this case, in two of our methods, we have the exact same code creating our item. So since we have the same code repeated, let's go ahead and set this up for our methods. As you know, we just define the method called setup. And then from there, you probably get the idea, so I'll just finish it off. Now our item object is going to be available to each of our tests. Since the test fields method, we're actually testing each of our fields, we're not going to bother this one. We're just going to work with test slug on save and test get absolute URL. And really, the only thing we need to do is remove our creation of our item object and change this to self.item. We'll do the same thing to test get absolute URL. Change this to self and change these to self. There we go. We have slimmed up our code. Our tests are a little more easier to understand because all we're seeing is what we're asserting and not a bunch of cruft for setting up each of our functions. So let's go ahead and run this. Oh, look at this. We have a failure. And we're failing in test fields. That should be quite odd. We didn't actually change anything in test fields. We have I am a title is not equal to make more tests. We're doing our normal self.assert. So let's open up our test and take a look. So we'll go down to our test fields. So this is normal, normal. Let's take a look. Oh, look at this. We're getting the first primary key from our database. The problem here is when we ran setup it inserted an item object and so when this is pulling out it's pulling out the first item in the database which is in our setup. This is a good illustration of why you don't hard code primary keys or IDs in the database when you're doing tests. This is, a, this is an easy fix in this case we can just do item.pk or ID. And then now when we run our tests, everything should work just fine. There we go, three tests. So let's go ahead and take a look at our final unit test that we're going to write for mark completed. We're going to go ahead and take advantage of the fact that we're creating an item object at the beginning of each method, and we're not going to worry about that. Since we have multiple states that we're going to be dealing with with our 
different item, we want to test before we do anything that our item is actually not completed in the first place because we have a default Boolean value for that item as false. Now we actually want to call our helper method. And then we want to test that completed is true. There we go. We're dealing with two different states. We're dealing with the starting state of the object and the ending state of the object. So let's go ahead and run our tests. And there we go. We have four running tests. This has been a very simple intro into testing. It's taken you on a tour of doing a little bit of navigation of how we're running our tests, how we set up our tests, how we define our tests, and then finally a little bit of how to interpret what our error messages show us. All of these things are skills that are, that are needed to take us to the next step in all of the rest of our tests. I highly recommend you get out there and find some of your projects that you're doing and just start testing your models. Models are the easiest thing to test and is a great starting off point in learning to test in Django. Also don't be afraid of making mistakes, writing bad tests, or anything like that because the more tests you write, the better you get at it and the first step is always the hardest of just getting started. Hopefully this video gives you a little bit of an idea of where to start and how to start. I want to thank you for watching this video and I want to thank you for supporting Go Django. Please join me for the next video and have a great day.